So we're going to go to safety first now. And this week, Brian's going to be talking to us about tracking dives. Hey, Brian, how you doing today? Hello, David. I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. Today we uh, we want to talk about uh, tracking dives. Some of the yeah. some of the safety things we need to think about when we go on a tracking dive, or maybe a wingsuit dive too. They're kind of similar things, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they well, they're not the same thing, but they have similar safety concerns. The main thing is not flying into other people's airspace, and so uh, you don't have a person shaped hole in the top of your parachute. So to me, this is all about uh, having a proper plan for where you're gonna go. And, of course, with the wingsuit, you're going to be opening up quite a bit later than everybody else. So in some ways, that gives you the advantage of being able to survey the scene for a longer period of time. But the main thing is that when you uh, when you do a tracking dive or, or a wingsuit dive, you create some separation across the jump run. So assuming that the jump runs into the wind, you just fly, uh, fly yourself perpendicular or even a 45 uh, to the jump run for a period of time before you get yourself, uh, you know, heading home or away or whatever your choice is. Uh, I think that's the biggest deal is you know where the other people are going to be and uh, you don't invade airspace. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Some of the, uh, I guess, uh, things that I see people getting tricked by sometimes are if the jump run turns. You know, sometimes yeah. we do hook jump runs. And so, you know, a wingsuit group might be planning a left pattern well, then if we end up hooking to the left and they get up, get out of the airplane after that hook's complete, now their left pattern's going to take them back towards the initial line. Right, exactly. And this is where I think proper communication between the jumpers and the pilot can really make a difference. Many drop zones uh, will deliberately do a curve to the jump run every single time, or they'll deliberately uh, run the, the jump run uh, for a period of time and then turn 90 and then fly for a little while and then turn 90. I think the main thing is that everybody talk to everybody else so you know what's going on. And maybe make sure whoever's leading it has some uh, has some capability to lead it. You know, most tracking dives are led <laughs> on their back. And, you know, I, I've seen a couple times where a newer jumper has been on a couple tracking dives and they're real excited about it and they say, I want to lead one. And maybe that person can't fly on their back very well yet or maybe they can't hold a yeah. straight line. Or And also I think it can be hard to kind of keep awareness of which way you're going on your back if you haven't done it before. Right. And this is where I think it's very helpful to have a navigator, especially for new leaders, somebody that will be flying directly or more or less directly above the leader who's on their back. Uh, so they, they have two separate roles, right? So the inverted person can see the jumpers. Uh, and so they can work to create uh, the, the right airspeed that collects the group and brings everybody together, whereas the other one can see the ground. And so if I'm flying above you on my belly and you're on your back, I can give you a little signal, hey, let's head back towards the drop zone or away from the ocean or whatever. Uh, I can see the ground, you can see me, so that makes us a nice navigational team. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about, I've seen people do this uh, a couple different ways. Like here in Sebastian, they tend to get out first, the trackers, and kind of go 45 off the line, sometimes just the whole dive, just 45 off the line. Yeah. Um, back uh, up north, oftentimes I see the trackers go out last, fly up line of flight for a little bit, then fly 90 degrees off it for quite a while, and then maybe come back downwind a little bit. Do you see, do you think either of those works, or do you see pros and cons to either uh, either way of doing that? Yeah, well, I think both ways can be done safely, and I've even seen it, seen it done both ways on the same load, where uh, one side uh, is taken up by the people who exit first, the other side of the jump run is taken by the people who exit last. It can be done, but uh, to me, the main thing is if you if you really had your choice, exiting last had some advantages, because if you exit after everybody, then you can uh you're going to have more people that are under canopy down there that you can see and navigate away from uh whereas if you exit first they're kind of raining down on you so you have a little more power position if you exit last okay well anything else that we haven't to hit on that topic well i think that uh, another part of this is the issue of losing somebody it's inevitable when you've got a larger tracking dive uh, especially the type that, that really goes fast and slow. Uh, when I say fast and slow, of course, fast forward speed, slow fall rate. You end up with uh, one or two people, sometimes many people, 
lagging behind. And there needs to be a plan for where they're going to go. Uh, and it seems to me that if you sort of follow through with the plan until you get lower down, instead of having people just continuing to track in whatever direction they want to go, since they're now uh, essentially on a solo, you can have a lot of chaos. So I think sticking to the plan in terms of the direction until you get down to break off and then, you know, uh, maybe a little bit on the early side taking off from that plan. Do you agree that that's the that, safest? That sounds good to me, yeah. Another tip maybe I'd throw out that I see a lot of people have trouble with is getting kind of low and behind. It seems like yeah. maybe you can recover from getting low and maybe you can recover from being behind, but it's tough to recover from both. You know, I, yeah, I, I always agree. try and stay kind of above and slightly ahead of the leader. That seems to be the, the sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's definitely the head. And you can bring yourself back with knee breaking. There's lots of really cool techniques for bringing yourself back into slot. But yeah, once you're behind, you're behind. Yeah. And so it seems to me that the the real answer, if you want to do relative work and not just show off your tracking skills as a leader, is to notice what's going on. And if you're losing people, ease off a little bit more. If you want to really have a, you know, a machismo measuring contest, then you you and the best jump, jumpers on the drop zone go and go fast. That's fine. But if you want to hang out with your friends, be aware of uh, who you're losing. And sometimes you can do things like changing your heading as the leader. Uh, even just 45 degrees uh, can help reel your group in. Because they allows can them cut the corner then. Exactly. Yeah, we do, you do the same thing with airplanes, don't you, if you're uh, flying a formation sure. mode, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We do that with canopy flight too. So. Uh, a good leader is uh, is not alone. So to me, leadership requires company, and that's something that uh, the folks in Washington could probably benefit from <laughs> thinking about as well. Leadership requires company. I've, I've oftentimes seen or uh, been on tracking dives where it will start just like you're saying, where the leader will start nice and slow and keep everybody together and maybe do the first turn that way. And then maybe the last, you know, 10, 15 seconds of the dive start to flatten out and speed up, you know, towards the yeah. end of the dive. And then those that want to really go fast, they can get a little bit of that too. Yeah, that's that's what I do every time. And it, it, it makes it fun for the folks that have been waiting for that opportunity to really turn it on. And that is fun, right, to, to expand your skills. That's part of this. Uh, but it's also fun to have a big flock where you can actually create a nice little wedge like birds flying south for the winter or whatever, uh, so much possibility for, for what we can do. Yeah, I think probably my favorite type of skydive. I really love tracking dives, especially towards the end of the day. I think they're a lot of fun. Everybody can play together. You know, you can get the belly guys and the free fly guys, and even once in a while the crew guys will come along. So that's, that's pretty Exactly. Fun. Yep, everybody tracks. So All right. Bring it on. Brian, where can we uh, – what are you up to nowadays? Is it Big Air Sports with a Z still? Is that where we look you yeah. up? Yeah, for the skydivers, uh, for the uh, the folks that are interested in bringing me in to uh, – cheer up their company go to to uh, brian com, which is uh the transcending fear site all right we'll talk to you on the next episode brian thanks right on dave see ya